Recording in progress. Welcome to our new knowledge today and thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Sandy Ratliff. I am with Virginia Community Capital and I am happy to be partnering with a number of really cool organizations in, uh, in the Washington County area. One is the uh, Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator, uh, which is a great place to be. Had offices there a number of years. The Washington County Chamber of Commerce and the town of Abington. It's hard to believe that we started this program in 2014 and it's continuing to uh, train um, entrepreneurs, not only in Washington County, but throughout Virginia and East Tennessee. Uh, just uh, a little blurb to let you know that today's session is being recorded uh, for training and, and educational purposes, but it will be available um, after the session on the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubators Facebook page. And then we have a new knowledge ch um, channel that is called youtube.com forward slash new knowledge. And you can find probably close to 175 uh, videos up there that we've done over the, the years. You will probably notice that we have everyone muted and their video off, but we I know that our um, presenters want to know questions from you. So if you will post those in the Q&A section or as in chat, they will address those at the end of the session. Um, I just, I'm, before I turn it over to Kathy, I just want to say a few things to, um, about Tourism Corporation and how good they've been uh, to Southwest Virginia. I know when I have worked over the years, I've probably been working with Steve for 15, 20 years. I started in uh, kindergarten uh, working with uh, his team and we were doing the Entrepreneur Express program, which I'm hoping that we're going to be bringing that back this year. But uh, you know, Steve uh, is the planning and partnership director, but Steve is no stranger to Southwest Virginia. He's uh, from the region, has uh, worked in the region, and I say that we have a special place in his heart uh, to help uh, our business community uh, get started in tourism. And Steve is also joined by Caitlin Johnson today, who's Director of Operations and Industry Initiatives. And um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you all taking the time to come today. And I'm going to let Kathy say a few words and turn it over to you all. Well, I don't think I can say much more. Steve uh, was the uh, tourism director for the town of Abingdon way back in the day. And so I think that's how I got to know Steve. I haven't, <clears throat> haven't had the pleasure of meeting Caitlin, but but if, if Steve has him as part of her team, I know that she is an exceptional uh, individual. So without further ado, Steve Gallion and Caitlin Johnson. All right. Well, thank you, Kathy and, and, and uh, Sandy. It is a pleasure to be here. Uh, great to see the uh, incubator offices. I've spent a lot of time there in the past, but it's my pleasure to join you today. As uh, Sandy said, I am the Planning and Partnership Director with Virginia Tourism Corporation and and I am joined with uh, Caitlin Johnson. Caitlin? Hi, everyone. Caitlin Johnson, Director of Industry Initiatives with ETC. And we're excited to be here today to talk more about tourism businesses. So uh, why mm -hmm. are they important, uh, what they are, how right. to start one. And most importantly, uh, we're going to give you some resources and some funding uh, uh, hints as we go forward. So, uh, do let me start with uh, what is partnership marketing? Um, this is a division of the Virginia Tourism Corporation, and uh, really our, our goal is to help uh, communities and help our tourism partners to maximize their tourism uh, potential. We do that through strategic tourism planning, uh, tourism de de business development, and cooperative partnership marketing opportunities. And yes, we want to tra travel as travelers to come here and experience our state, but it is a given that, but it is not a given that they will come. So just like any business at VTC, we must market ourselves, evaluate our assets, look at our competition and find voids that, uh, that we can improve to make that ex visitor experience even better. But before we get into the how of starting a tourism business, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the why. But before we get to that, 
we got to talk and acknowledge this little beast. We've been battling uh, the COVID pandemic now for almost two years, and certainly no industry has been impacted more than the travel and tourism industry. We were on a good projection over the past several years of seeing steady growth in the travel expenditures in Virginia. We were up close to $27 billion. And then, of course, 2020 came along. And in the year 2020, we saw about a 30% decrease in those travel and tourism expenditures. And, and so, obviously, uh, it was a, a big hit for our industry. But the good thing is that uh, here you see a graphic that shows kind of the anatomy of the recovery. We're in that final recovery stage where the, we're beginning to see international travel come back and that large events are, are taking uh, place. And even despite the impact of Omicron uh, here recently, we're, we're still seeing uh, signs of recovery. And that's really important because uh, in the past, we know that the tourism industry is a resilient industry and it's quick to recover after times of crisis. After 9-11, uh, the tourism industry led that recovery. After the Great Recession, uh, again, tourism was, was quick to, uh, to get people back into the communities and get those dollars flowing into the communities. And that's really important because ultimately tourism is an instant revenue generator for our Virginia communities. And what does that mean? Well, that means that a visitor comes into the locality, they spend their money, and then they leave. And But that money that's left behind goes into the cash registers of the businesses that they're left and goes into the locality's uh, tax coffers, uh, uh, usually within about a three-month period. So again, tourism is an instant revenue generator. So the more that we can promote the growth of tourism, the more that we can expand tourism businesses, the better it is for, for our communities, for our tourism industry, and for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now, the importance of planning, uh, even post-pandemic, is, is very important. And one major way that we at the Virginia Tourism Corporation are working to keep our Virginia communities thriving is with a strategic plan called Drive 2.0. And Caitlin's going to walk us through uh, some of the highlights of that that will be a great resource for you to refer to as you're considering starting a tourism business. Caitlin. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, so in partnership marketing, we really focus on strategic planning. And the major way that we're doing this is through our Drive 2.0 initiative. So we're focused on this because the tourism industry is, a com is an extremely competitive market. So in order to succeed and thrive, Virginia communities must continue to develop new tourism product and focus on winning strategies to evolve and grow. And that is where your new tourism business could come in. Um, when we increase tourism development, we know that we increase the visitor experience, the economic impact to that community, and ultimately our quality of life. So this Drive 2.0 strategic plan is a result of conversations that we had with Virginia's tourism industry as we look to the future and try to plan for success. And it really focuses on answering two questions. What should we be promoting? So what are those key lures that attract people to Virginia? And what should we be building? So what tourism product or businesses need to be developed to either bring in more people or get people to stay longer? Now, obviously a strategic plan needs to dig a lot deeper than just two questions, but uh, by answering these two questions, we will continue to keep Virginia competitive and thriving. But really, why is that important? Well, one reason is that when we look at US Census data over the last uh, 10 years, we see that rural populations nationwide are declining and that also holds true in Virginia. So we may see a decline slow some with the effects that the pandemic has had on the workplace and how uh, people can really work from anywhere. But for now, we're still seeing this uh, trend hold true. So when we look to the future, U.S. Census projections demonstrate that 80% of the population growth over the next 10 years will be in this area here uh, represented by this uh, gold crescent shape. Um, this is great for those communities that are in that, in that area, but what about the areas that are seeing a decline? 
So this is why it's so important to focus intentionally on helping build and promote vibrant communities. And we hope to focus on cultivating entrepreneurs to help communities thrive, even in this shifting landscape. So why tourism? How's that going to um, help communities that are seeing a decline in population? Well, Longwood's, Inter Longwood's international research team shows that when you invest in tourism, you're also powering economic development. So their research developed and termed what they call the halo effect, which shows that when a destination is deemed as a good place to visit, it's likely also seen as a good place to live and then a good place to work and also a possible good place to start a business. So it's this cyclical effect that benefits everyone, especially the quality of life of the residents. So creating a vibrant community is the goal because vibrant communities are places that people don't want to leave because they can see a future there. So this is where our entrepreneurs and future business owners come in because you can help create a vibrant community by showcasing your passions through a tourism business. So one example we have on how tourism can really impact a community is in Farmville, which is in Prince William County, Prince, sorry, Prince Edward County. Um, over the past decade, they've been really intentional with changes to their tourism offering. So they've really focused on outdoor recreation, their black heritage and capitalizing on the creation of the Highbridge Trail State Park. So their influx of tourism product actually created a need for more lodging. So this was met with the owners of Sandy River Outdoor Adventures adding glamping teepees, which you can see pictured here, to their property that already included a zipline course and a bike rental shop in town. And then the community also had the addition of the Hotel Wyan Oak, which was through a tourism development finance program, pro program with VTC. So the result of all of this uh, is that from 2017 to 2018, Prince Edward County actually experienced a 12.7% increase in tourism related expenditures, which was three times the state average that year. So if you wanna open a tourism business, there are so many things to choose from, from lodging to attractions, outfitters, rentals. When a tourist comes into a community, their dollar really does have so many touch points. But really the question is, what do you love to do? What do you want to showcase about your community? So if you noticed um, from that list, most of the types of businesses from the previous slide were things that you could do outside. Well, that's because from our research with Drive 2.0, we found that the highest priority for stakeholders and for Virginia is in the outdoor sector. And this has proven to be even more true now with the influence of the pandemic has had um, from people wanting to feel safe and to gather outside. So outdoors and outdoor activities are a huge growth market for Virginia and potential tourism businesses. So if you're thinking of starting a tourism business, it would be a great idea to capitalize on that trend. So we're gonna talk a little more about this idea of tying your business to something uh, that is already doing well. And this is illustrated here in this diagram for Blue Ridge Highlands from our Drive 2.0 research. Um, this model of interpreting information is called the hub and spoke model. And that's because it focuses on the central idea of something that's already performing well and then adding to it with spokes around it. So you can see here on the right um, in the red circle, nature and outdoors is the hub or central idea. And then the surrounding smoke, spokes of uh, music heritage, food and beverage, and trails, those are things that um, support the hub and then make it more appealing. So while the hub uh, also benefits because those spokes, um, the, the spokes benefit from the hub because the spokes, this hub is the main driver for them. So it's really capitalizing on that main thing that's already doing well. So tying your potential business to an existing hub or existing spoke is really key because you're already playing on the strengths of your area. So for example, if you're looking to start a tourism business in Blue Ridge Highlands region of Virginia, it would be really beneficial to consider these strengths that already exist in the area. But if you're not in Blue Ridge Highlands or you're uh, just interested in seeing 
what other regions have for recommendations, please do check out um, the other hub and spokes from the regional plans on VATC.org. And the link is uh, there on the page if you want to take that down or we'll send it afterwards too. Um, in each regional plan, along with hub and spokes that we just went over, there are also recommendations and a roundup for opportunities, challenges, and trends for each of the regions of Virginia. So our Drive 2.0 statewide tourism plan really does come down to these strategic imperatives, and they center on promotional efforts by identifying and telling unique stories and product development through building great experiences. So like I mentioned before, we really set out to answer those two questions about promotion and development, but then we decided that our plan really could use a little more which is why we developed this third strategic imperative centered around growth and impact and providing unparalleled support for our tourism industry. So the result is the development of five how-to guides. And these how-to guides are gonna be the framework today to discuss how to start a tourism business. So first, um, this tell and sell your story guide is all about identifying your unique story and explore the ways to share that with the world. So crafting your story starts by determining what has truly set you apart for potential travelers and customers to your business. They wanna know who you are, what you offer and why they should come there over somewhere else. So to get a flavor of what this guide entails, we're gonna highlight one section of the guide in particular, which is that um, called the seven key questions to tell your story. So these questions are great starting off point, not only just for business development, but pretty much for anything new that you're gonna embark on. We highly recommend going through these questions when thinking about planning your business. So to develop your plan, we suggest first off answering, who are you? It's about identifying what's believable, what's important and what's differentiating about your business. And if your business is showcasing your locality, then you can also identify what's important to your community too. So then you wanna answer, what are you trying to accomplish? You want to establish SMART goals, which means that you want them to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. And then you wanna answer who can make that happen? You wanna identify your target audience. You wanna ask yourself what message will move people to action? So how do you get your audience to actually engage with you? Then what channel or vehicle will deliver that message best? And then what resources do you have? You wanna identify partnerships you, that you can leverage in order to get your message out there. And again, VTC is a great resource here with things like MLP and co-op programs. And Steve's going to talk more about those resources in a little bit. And then finally, um, how will you know if you're successful? Well, remember back to the SMART goals that the M means measurable. So this is where you look to track your KPIs and what you need to do to hold yourself accountable. And ultimately, that is how you're going to show if you are successful or not. So in our second guide uh, for enhanced experiences, it really focuses on that shifting landscape of destination marketing organizations, shifting to more of a destination management. So tourism offices are gonna be looking for entrepreneurs to create that new necessary tourism product that they need to stay competitive. So when you make your way through this guide, think not only what are your business's immediate needs, but what are some gaps in the community that maybe your business could help fill? So, but how will filling these gaps leverage what you hope to do in the community? Well, that's because like we said, enhancing the community experience is what leads to a better vibrancy and a better quality of life, especially for the community residents. And in our third guide, recruiting partners, um, this one is gonna help you more fully appreciate and leverage your greatest asset, which is partnerships. Um, no business can succeed alone. Attractions need lodging. Lodging needs nearby restaurants. Restaurants need attractions and things to do. Tourism really does thrive in this symbiosis. So this guide walks through um, mapping out and creating a list of your network 
which starts by identifying the players and potential partners in your community. Um, your number one partner really should be your uh, destination marketing office or your, your DMO. So prioritize your list based on your most important and most pressing needs. And then the guide walks you through best practices when looking for partnerships. And basically, in short, that means that remembering that the most effective partnerships really center around a shared focus or a mission that binds the parties together. So it's all about finding that common goal. Um, of, the, of all the challenges facing a tourism business, finding funding and other resources is typically at the top of this list. So in this guide, uh, we can explore an expanded view, um, including opportunities like traditional grants or innovative tourism zones that incentivize growth. So with this new view, it's time to tap into more brain power. So this is where you use that list of partners that you identified in guide three, because they may actually know of rocks to look under that you may not have considered before. So the guide does include a, an extensive list of funding resources. Some you may know, but others that might be new to you. And the, they might actually require partnerships that are new too. So then it comes to making the right ask. This section really underscores the importance of strategic alignment with the funding source and also walks through those um, best practices for grant writing, which Steve will also touch on in a little bit. So making the case, part of operating in the travel and tourism industry means not, not just having to sell yourself, but also um, selling your destination. So when it comes to making your case or advocating for yourself, most people just focus on the facts and expect those facts to just speak for themselves. But with this fifth guide, we're really focusing on what the most powerful story is for your key set of stakeholders. So numbers are important, but these facts alone are not necessarily what's gonna get your stakeholders on your side. So research from Destinations International actually says that it's all about finding that shared common value. It's about combining emotion with something that can't be argued. So this guide is uh, really going to walk you through those uh, steps to help perfect your pitch and make your case. So it starts by identifying key stakeholders that you want to influence. Then it's about identifying that story that resonates with each of them. And once you know your story, then you're able to come back and identify the right facts that back up that story. So now I just want to call out one section of this guide specifically, which is the importance of using the right language to craft that shared common value. So generally when we want to persuade something or influence someone of something, you use facts, but um, we're going to include some emotional arguments with that as well. So Destinations International also has a lot of anecdotal and qualitative uh, research using the right words that really help make the best case for tourism. And they found that a simple word change can actually evoke a completely different emotion when talking with stakeholders. So we can see here that words like community, people, support, and service all resonate positively when speaking about tourism. So really remember these and emphasize these words so the listener gets gets them and becomes emotionally connected with what you're doing. Because it's all about in order to have the right narrative, it starts with a values-based approach. And that is really where emotion and logic meet. And this is really important for a tourism business when finding partners. It's also important when applying for funding. And it's also important for communicating with future stakeholders. So today we've walked through that identify, uh, we, we've walked through and identified that building and setting up a tourism business involves telling your story, understanding your assets, recruiting partners, finding funding, and then eventually making the case to those stakeholders. So if you do want a more in-depth look into each of these steps, please do check out our how-to guides. They can be downloaded um, at this link here. But as I mentioned, uh, starting a tourism business really boils down to finding funding and helpful resources is usually at the top of the list. 
So that's why we've dedicated the rest of our time to discussing what helpful resources BTC has for our tourism industry. And I'm gonna pass this back to Steve to talk more about that. Thank you, Caitlin. Well, certainly uh, we, none of us can go it alone. It's, going, it's important for us to, to uh, tap into all of the available resources. And so what I'm going to finish up our discussion today are some of the resources that are available to you from, from the tourism standpoint. First and foremost, if you are not working with your local destination marketing organization, DMO, or that's kind of, I guess, the formal name for your local or regional tourism offices, please reach out to those, those folks. They are a tremendous asset for you to, to uh, uh, provide information about your community, about setting up a business, uh, providing you research, uh, information about who's coming to the locality, and then also, uh, they're going to be very, very important partners in promoting your business. So again, reach out to, the, to those destination marketing organizations. Uh, the two regional organizations in Southwest are, are the Southwest Virginia uh, Cultural Heritage Foundation and the Heart of Appalachia. You also have the Blue Ridge Travel Association. And then uh, Southwest Virginia probably has the highest concentration of active uh, destination marketing organizations in the state. So regardless of where you're located, th there, there should be a DMO that you should engage with. Now, the Virginia Tourism Corporation offers a, an industry website, VATC.org. And this is where you can find out about all of the different programs that the Virginia Tourism Corporation offers to our Virginia industry travel partners. Uh, and you'll notice that they're across the top, everything from marketing to grants, to research, uh, to partnership marketing. Uh, also uh, in the essential section of that, you will be able to find out uh, a schedule for special meetings, such as our VTC orientation program, which is a great way for you to interact with the staff at Virginia Tourism Corporation. And then also I'd encourage you to sign up for our travel post. Uh, which is our monthly newsletter that goes out to our industry partners. This will have information about new programs that Virginia Tourism is offering, as well as uh, a, a, a public relation leads uh, sometimes. And you can also sign up for the PR leads, uh, which will allow you to, to get uh, information from our communications department on travel writers that may be interested in unique story ideas. Again, all of that is available at our industry website, VATC.org. Do want to mention some of our marketing campaigns. These are opportunities for you to be able to tie into our uh, marketing efforts, which are uh, go well beyond Virginia uh, to our primary and secondary travel markets. Uh, we launched in the fall of 2021 our flagship campaign, Share What You Love, and that's really about bringing real people to Virginia and inviting them to share what they love uh, about visiting Virginia. Our Wonder Love campaign, that was something that we developed uh, in response to the pandemic uh, and, and will continue through 2022. And it really promotes uh, uh, road trips in Virginia. And certainly a lot of our rural destinations are ideal road trip destinations. And then our, our uh, other campaign that we're launching is Eat, Drink, and Love. And that's our statewide culinary campaign. So if you have a, a business, uh, a restaurant, or, or, or something that is, fits into the culinary vein, such as a, a brewery or a winery or distillery, check into that. There are opportunities for you to partner with the Virginia Tourism Corporation on, uh, on our major campaigns. But more importantly, the Virginia Tourism Corporation offers a number of co-op advertising programs. And you can see here that everything from so social to search to print to digital uh, and, and then uh, travel uh, websites. We offer cooperative advertising with these, these, uh, these entities. And what's important about that is it, it's an opportunity for you to tap into our uh, programs at a reduced rate. 
Uh, in some cases, you get a rebate or a reimbursement for participating in a uh, program such as our Facebook or Instagram social campaigns. Or we have bought down the cost of advertising. You'll see uh, there Blue Ridge Outdoors, a 55% 55, uh, 55 discount on print ads. So again, be sure, go to VATC.org, click on our marketing section, and you'll find uh, programs that will be beneficial and can help uh, reduce the cost of your market. Now, as we've talked about the importance of research, research is a very uh, uh, integral part of any business plan. Uh, you're going to need to know what, uh, what are some of the financial numbers. Uh, and, and this is really true of, of any business, not just a tourism business, but certainly our research section on VATC.org has a lot of travel data and visitor profiles. You'll be able to find out what is the economic impact of tourism in your community. You'll be able to find out a visitor profile uh, and, and by different segments, whether it's an outdoor traveler or a business traveler or, or a cultural and arts traveler. Uh, all of them have a little bit different uh, uh, personas and, and uh, uh, travel propensities. And then of course, as, as Caitlin has mentioned, be sure and go back and look at Drive 2.0. Those how-to guides, again, are focused primarily on the travel and tourism industry, but there's really great uh, uh, foundational direction and tips for any type of business. Now, of course, any business is always looking for funding. And I am pleased to announce that uh, the Virginia Tourism Corporation has just launched three new funding programs. And I'm going to give you a quick overview of those here in, in just a moment. Uh, but these are, are ways for you to leverage your existing marketing dollars uh, and partner with Virginia Tourism Corporation and receive some funding. All of these programs are now currently open. And uh, again, you can find that information at VATC.org. And all of them are due by March 8th of 2022. So uh, I want to walk you through, through the three programs. The program that is probably most applicable to, to the folks uh, on the webinar today is our VTC Recovery Marketing Leverage Program. And this is something that we've offered for the past uh, uh, couple of years. Uh, it it is, allows for small businesses that are tourism related. So uh, to, to apply for funding, that's hotels, bed and breakfast, restaurants, breweries, wineries, distilleries, attractions, retails, nonprofits with a tourism focus. Uh, so for example, uh, certain festivals are able to apply in this program. Certainly our destination marketing uh, organizations and our localities, uh, whether it's a town or county or city or uh, a non government organizations such as a, a planning district commission. All of these are available uh, or eligible to apply for these programs. We have two funding levels, uh, $10,000. And then if you happen to be a large attraction that attracts over 100,000 annual visitation, uh, then uh, you could apply for up to $20,000. All of these programs do require a research base. And again, there's that word research. Uh, a research-based and measurable marketing program that uh, demonstrates a significant and positive tourism impact. And we do require that there be a 50% cash or in-kind match uh, to be provided by the partners. Some of the eligible expenses uh, that are uh, covered by this grant program would include things like digital and social media, uh, print advertising, and uh, search engine optimization. The grants do not cover the cost of doing business, such as capital projects or signage or, or staff cost. And again, must demonstrate a positive and significant impact on tourism. This is a reimbursable grant program. So you would, you would expend the dollars, send us documentation, and we would send you uh, a reimbursement check. And again, applications are now open and due on March 8th of 2022. I do want to mention the, uh, a couple of other programs that uh, are currently open. One is our special events and festivals program. And uh, again, 
events are a major driver for visitation to our Virginia communities. And this, this program is focused on those events that drive visitation from people who are more than 50 miles away from the event des destination. And in, and in particular, those that, uh, that demonstrate or, or encourage overnight visitation to Virginia communities. Uh, there are two funding levels, uh, $10,000 for smaller events and up to $20,000 for larger events. And again, you'll see uh, similar requirements uh, of be having a research-based and measurable marketing program. Uh, the funds for this program can be used uh, both for marketing and production of special events. And production includes things like stage rental or talent fees or or other costs that are associated with putting on a festival. These are again, reimbursable sponsorships and uh, the shares and on, on funding these is upon the impact of tourism on the community. And then again, uh, these applications are also due March 8th of 2022. And then finally, uh, we may have some DMO partners that are on, on the webinar today. Uh, the DMO marketing grants are only available to our destination marketing organizations. And uh, again, this is to help them leverage their existing marketing budgets. There's a $20,000 maximum award uh, for our DMOs. You kind of see that recurring theme of research-based and measurable marketing programs that, that, again, demonstrate that significant and positive impact on tourism. And also, again, you'll see that the uh, the grants can cover mar eligible marketing expenses, again, such as social media, uh, print advertising, uh, and uh, uh, search engine optimization. And again, cannot cover the cost of doing business such as uh, staff salaries or capital projects. And also, a, a, again, a, a reimbursable type of grant program. And all of these applications are due no later than March 8th of 2022. Now, I know I've gone through that very quickly, but there is complete information available again on VATC.org. So in closing, I do want to, uh, to give you some helpful tips for applying for our grants are really, these are true for any funding application, whether it's grant or even a loan. First of all, read the guidelines uh, in having administered these grants for close to 20 years now, I can tell you people don't read the guidelines and points are taken off. And these are highly competitive applications. So make sure you read and understand the guidelines. And, and as you're reading those, begin gathering that required information, such as the research and financial data and the uh, baseline data, the KPIs, key performance indicators uh, that impact your program. So gather that information. Take advantage of all the resources. Uh, when you go to VATC.org and you look at our grants, you'll see that there's a recorded webinar that walks you through in more detail each of the programs. And then meet the deadlines. We are very, we're very committed to help you as you uh, are working on your application. But the one thing we cannot do is extend the deadline. So in this case, that's the March 8th, 2022 by 5 p.m. So be sure that you meet that deadline. And again, I cannot stress how important it is to read those guidelines. And we are here to help you. Here on the screen, you'll see uh, our contact information for Stacy Martin, who is our grants manager, and Angela Wiggins, who is our grant specialist. They will both be uh, uh, available to help you uh, with any questions. Uh, as you go along with your grant application or, or, or with other uh, of our Virginia Tourism Corporation uh, products. So with that, uh, we thank you and we will be glad to answer any questions. Thanks, Steve and Caitlin. Uh, we do have a question. Would a farmer's market fit into the Eat, Drink and Love campaign? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that would be uh, uh, a great opportunity for you to tap into the uh, to that campaign. And in particular, as most farmers markets do, they highlight that local flavor, the local product, uh, 
of a locality. So be sure and reach out to uh, both our, our brand department, Lindsay Norman, and again, that information will be available on VATC.org, as well as our communication department. Uh, uh, that will be able to share that information with them. I also would encourage you to look at our grant program. There, uh, we have received programs in the past from farmers markets uh, that uh, have a unique spin to increase visitation to, uh, to their locality through uh, activities and products at the farmers market. Okay, another question. Do Airbnbs qualify under any of these programs? Yes, uh, uh, Airbnbs would be quali- uh, eligible to uh, promote on our uh, Virginia.org website and also would be uh, uh, eligible to apply for our grant programs. Uh, the, w- the one word of caution there is make sure that you have the data that is needed uh, to, to, uh, to affect a good and strong application. Uh, and that, that is things like past visitation, where your visitors are coming from, uh, any of uh, the revenue figures that will be used to measure the success of your program. Um, was that all your screens or your uh, slides? If so, uh, could you uh, take stop screen sharing? One thing that's too, Steve, I wanted to uh, mention is that you've got two, uh, several staff people here in far southwest Virginia. For those folks that are looking um, about starting a business or anything, um, Steve, I'll let you tell who these are and what they can help you do. Right. Yes. In southwest Virginia, we have Becky Nave, who is our senior destination development specialist. She is based in the Bristol area and represents uh, roughly from Bristol up to uh, the Montgomery County area in areas south, let's say south of 81. And then north of 81 from uh, from the Bluefield area down to Cumberland Gap is Michelle Wharton. And Michelle uh, is, is based there in the Bluefield area. Both of these folks are great resources for you to reach out to, uh, to discuss your tourism business. Uh, and, and they can be very helpful in connecting you to the Virginia Tourism Corporation uh, services and products, but also they know the local resources, uh, such as Virginia Community Capital, such as uh, the uh, incubators and other uh, other uh, business assistance resources throughout the region. So be sure and reach out to them. And again, that information is available on our industry website, theatc.org. And I will say they keep up with um, local uh, government Uh, programs and regional programs that support, uh, like for example, in uh, far Southwest Virginia where the um, Virginia Coalfield Economic Development Authority is at, they have some grant programs that are supporting uh, uh, tourism related businesses. So Becky and um, uh, Michelle can keep you up to date on what's going on. Actually, I think they would probably be a good first point of contact if this is something you're thinking about getting into. I would highly recommend that you reach out to them. And if you don't know how, I know you should have my email addresses, uh, my email address from the Zoom links. So uh, I'll be happy to connect you with it or see if they just go to their website and it's right there. But they are very knowledgeable and stay very, very active in Southwest Virginia in their market. Yes. Um, I don't see any other questions, but I, I, I do. And Steve or or Caitlin, you, you could answer, um, uh, where do you see uh, tour or uh, business owners get into trouble the fastest or the quickest? I mean, do you, you know, is it that they are going on assumptions, they don't do their homework, they, um, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what do you think are the, you know, the two or three things that, that gets folks into trouble the fastest in a tourism business? Well, I'll, I'll chime in and let Caitlin, I think, uh, keep things realistic and have as much data uh, as possible. Uh, you've heard uh, Caitlin mentioned voids and lures. Make sure that your business is filling a void. 
That doesn't mean necessarily that uh, you have to have something completely new, but can you do something different than what it, maybe another business is providing? Uh, and then make sure that, uh, that whatever your business is, your service is, is something that the visitor wants. Uh, I'll go back to one of the, uh, the, the guides uh, that uh, Caitlin was mentioning, the seven questions. Uh, those are really good questions to ask, not only about your marketing, but also about your business. You know, who, what do you want to accomplish and uh, who can make that happen? Answer those questions. Uh, you know, I think those are those are some good guidances. But probably keeping it realistic and having as much information as possible are key. Yeah, I completely agree with Steve. I would only add to know your audience, know who you're trying to reach, and if that audience is already in the area, then that is great. If the if you're building an a business that capitalizes on outdoor or something like that in your locality is already known for that, that's even better because you're, you're going to fill a void, like Steve said, and you're going to add to that, um, add to that experience that they're already getting. So that would be my only addition, but Steve hit on the high points. And I would suggest too, is to uh, network with those other existing uh, tourism businesses within that community, because you all can piggyback on um, uh, projects, programs, maybe even uh, the, some of the grant programs that Steve mentioned. Several, what made me think about that, and early on when we started the challenge this year, the Washington County Challenge, several of them were talking about how they want to partner. After they learned what each other was doing, how they want to partner. For example, if you have an Airbnb in Damascus, I would want to partner with the bike shops and any other because I want them to send me business and I do want to have an opportunity to help your clients to send them business. And actually, uh, a lady that runs an, a, um, uh, you probably remember Eva Belay with uh, Adventure Mendota. Well, she has a Airbnb and Eva says she keeps uh, rack cards of tourism events that's coming up. It could be what's the, at the Carter Fold, what's coming up on their session or what's going on at the Devil's Back uh, uh, Bathtub or any of those. So I encourage you, don't leave out. You know, Steve Willinger always uses to say the low-hanging fruit. Well, that's something don't forget about is that stuff where you can, you can work together and help each other. And that's what it's all about is being a good corporate citizen and uh, helping each other out. Definitely. I think the other tourism industry is, is the epitome of a rising tide floats all boats and it's all about partnerships and working together. You, at tourism Corporation, y'all love each other, don't you? You love everyone. <laughs> it's for lovers. <laughs> uh, again, thank you so much for your time. I know it takes a while to put these, uh, a workshop together and slides, but I thank you for doing that. That again, demonstrates your commitment to uh, the business industry and the tourism industry in Southwest Virginia or all over the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, just want to remind folks, today's workshop was being recorded uh, and it will be available on the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubators Facebook page and on our YouTube channel, New Knowledge. And um, we also put it up on the Virginia Community Capitals Facebook and YouTube channel. So there's a lot of content on that uh, on our YouTube channel. So if you ever are stuck on anything like how do I start a Facebook page or uh, last week, our last session was on financial projections where we had the CFO at, at uh, Food City Stores, which is one of the largest employers in Southwest Virginia, um, that you can find all kinds of uh, data on that. I want to put a plug in for our next session, which will be held on February the 23rd. It will be on video development, how to develop content and push it out, which it's great. You know, we all have these phones, most of us carrying around, or we have the etch and sketch, but that's a great opportunity for you to create a video, tell folks what's going on in your business, get the word out, um, I was doing a workshop a number of years ago in uh, Allegheny County and someone was talking about where they've been posting some and, uh, and some didn't even think about YouTube and they went and searched on YouTube and people had been coming to their business, taking video and putting that, putting it up on YouTube and they didn't even know about that. 
So it is a, a great way, and I hope that you'll join us on um, February the 23rd. And again, if you got something out of this program today, share it, uh, the link with others, and so that they can uh, get this. So thanks again for coming, and um, be a blessing to someone today, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.